Now on Action News, the brutal stabbing deaths of a man and woman last July here in Las Vegas looked like a clear case of a murder-suicide, but tonight, police are looking for a man they now say killed them both. It's our top story at 11. Channel 13 Action News reporter Melissa McCarty has more. Last July, Juana Martinez and Cipriano Elena were found stabbed to death in this home near Bruce in Washington. It was ruled a murder-suicide stemming from a domestic dispute. One month after the stabbing here, Metro Police realized this was no murder-suicide, but in fact a double murder allegedly by the hands of Jose Elena. Now, he's been on the run for over a year now, and according to these police reports, he reappeared in Las Vegas yesterday trying to kidnap his own children. 30-year-old Elena allegedly stabbed his wife Juana and then his own brother after he tried to intervene in the brutal attack. After evading police, Elena, who is five foot tall, weighing about 185 pounds, may be lingering around Las Vegas, trying to get his children who are staying with relatives. This story continuing to develop. Stay with Action News. And if you have any information about Jose Leo Elena, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at 385-5555. Again, that is 385-5555. Melissa McCarty, Channel 13 Action News. New tonight in the Valley Metro is working a pair of nasty wrecks right now. The first happened here on Sahara near Valley View around 7 p.m. Two cars were involved. A teenage girl was hurt in the crash. She's said to be in critical condition. Sahara was shut down while crews cleared the scene. A woman is fighting for her life tonight after this hit and run crash on Martin Luther King at Mineral. Four people were injured. One is in critical at UMC. Metro says three cars were involved and one truck fled the scene. Officers believe they've located that vehicle in a nearby parking lot. It was a one night crime spree that spanned the valley Easter weekend, including this brutal beating outside the MGM Grand. Tonight we have even more details from the investigation. Those details come from a transcript of testimony before the grand jury that indicted four people for the crime spree. Among those testifying were MGM employees assaulted by a throng of youths while security cameras caught the beatings on videotape. One victim described having his shoulder separated and still in a sling the day he testified. A store clerk told one told of one teen involved in a free for all in his store threatening to blow his head off if he called police. Four people were indicted by the grand jury, but prosecutors say more are out there who haven't been caught. Can't tell you numbers, but I know there's still a number of them outstanding and uh, uh, Metro. There's still an ongoing investigation taking place. The four people indicted for the crime will be in court next week to learn when they will go to trial. This has been a day for local law enforcement to remember fellow officers who gave their lives to protect and serve. Friends and family of 22 men and women killed in the line of duty gathered today for the Southern Nevada Law Enforcement Memorial Service. Many were there to remember Metro Sergeant Henry Prendez. His widow Dawn and daughter Brooke spoke at today's ceremony. There's so much more behind that badge. There was a kind, open-hearted, and faithful man. Makes us proud and gives us a peace and a joy at this time when it's very difficult. Those close to Sergeant Prendez say they'll continue to support and attend events like this to keep his memory alive along with other officers who've lost their lives in the line of duty. Certainly several officers had memories of Sergeant Prendez in their hearts as they took part in tonight's torch run to kick off the Nevada Special Olympics. Action News reporter Christina Brown has more from UNLV. On most nights, when law enforcement officers blanket parts of the strip, somebody is going to end up behind bars. Not tonight. That probably goes back to, to why we even became law enforcement officers in the first place. We all want to pitch in and do our part. This is a special night for more than 100 officers and the special people waiting for them to arrive. It's exciting. We get to do it for the community. And you see, this is the opening ceremony for the Special Olympics. This is the flame of hope, hope for Special Olympic athletes to participate in the games that they do throughout the year. Runners from the Metro Police Academy, Nevada Highway Patrol Troopers, and officers from the Department of Public Safety are running for people like 22-year-old Donna Stevens. She plans to participate in the swimming competition. I learned cooperation and helpfulness. An exciting group from a very special group of people.
More than 200 of these special athletes are competing for Olympic gold. Then they'll move on to the state and national championships. From UNLV, Christina Brown, Channel 13, Action News. And from the torch run to a torched store, damage is estimated at $200,000 from this blaze at a construction site yesterday at Rainbow and Warm Springs. Investigators say it was started when sparks from a welding torch ignited some insulation on top of the future Albertson store. No one was hurt in the fire. Construction out on the local roads is getting a $587 million boost. The money will be spent fixing our roads next year. The Regional Transportation Commission budget includes plans to widen Summerlin Parkway at US 95, updating stretches of the Beltway, the airport connector tunnel, and turning North 5th Street into a super arterial that will cut across the valley. Ideas are the stuff dreams are made of, and that saying has been taken to a step further on the new ABC reality show American Inventor. A Las Vegas woman was actually on that show, and her idea could someday show up at a store near you. Action News meteorologist Mark Fister decided to find out what it's all about in tonight's Fister Files. Necessity with her good intentions. They say necessity is the mother of invention. Well, I didn't know we needed a convertible shoe. For years and years and years, people have been trying to get different looks out of one pair of shoes. Where would this country be without her invention? You mean people own more than one pair of shoes? <laughs> Why? It's a shoe that gives you more than one look, and the, the way that it does it, it rotates the surfaces. The shoe is called Options, and it impressed the judges on American Inventor. Um, hi, Margaret. This is Nigel calling you from American Inventor. Could you give me a call, please, regarding your um, convertible shoe invention that you pitched to us uh, last year? So Margie packed up her options and headed for L.A. with the hope of converting her convertible shoes into a contract and some cold cash. So how'd it go? You're like a deer in the headlights when it does take place, and it's, it's a blur. Peter Jones, he just didn't get it. Doug Hall said, you know, it's interesting, he says, but, you know, it doesn't float his boat. Mary Lou, who knows what women want, knows their buying habits, I could tell that she got it. And the fact that she got it meant, meant the world to me. Ed also liked it. He said his wife would buy it. He said his daughter would buy it. But Margie only received two yes votes, and she needed three to move on. And it left me nothing but encouraged. Especially now that a big shoe company is interested in her convertible shoes. I always thought inventors were old men in white lab coats with beakers. But as we've seen on American Inventor, that couldn't be further from the truth. But just in case there are some inventors in white lab coats in need of footwear. Why not slowly have a, a, a pair of shoes that you could turn to all white? I'm Mark Fister with... The Fister Files. <laughs> Well, unfortunately, there is nothing too inventive about the weather this evening. It's warm out there as we look down on the Las Vegas Strip live from our Mandalay Bay cam. So what can we expect tomorrow? Maybe we'll have some options. Yes, maybe. <laughs> like air conditioning. Big one. For the latest, let's go to meteorologist Mike Chalinas uh, with a look at our early warning desert Doppler. Mike, what do you say? <laughs> Run to the basement, get some cheap cooling. Indeed, not a whole lot of options for tomorrow, but Sunday there are some big options coming our way. Early warning desert Doppler. Doppler radar did flash some shot signs of showers and thunderstorms well to the north of us, north of Cedar City. That was earlier today. Nothing going on out there tonight. Seven day forecast Saturday and Sunday were dry. I think for the most part still windy. A few clouds temps do cool down to the upper, I should say, uh, lower 90s by Sunday. Then a chance for showers and thunderstorms on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. Kind of up and down with temperatures in the upper range of the 90s to low 100s. All right, the basic story today was the heat and the wind. We got up to 102 degrees today, and that did tie a record dating back to 1958. It's still warm out there now. 85 degrees North Las Vegas, 89 Nellis, 87 Spring Valley, the same at sunrise, and 89 degrees in Henderson. We also had some wind today, and we still do, and we will have some more wind tomorrow with the system coming in from the west. 18 mile an hour winds at Nellis, 10 the lakes, and 15 Southern Highlands. Now, let's combine everything here. You've got a lot of heat during the course of the daytime hours. That heat is going to rise because it's lighter. As that little column of air stretches out, we take a little wind in place. We start to turn that air, and guess what? 
dust devil. Check this out. This was at um, Decatur and uh, Sunset about 4 o'clock this afternoon. Chief photographer Chris Benka out there. Nice looking dust devil. Usually the winds in these are about 40 to 45 miles an hour and they will kick up at times. A little debris cloud there. You can see some stuff flying around and no damage done by that. And typically you won't get any damage from Dust devils. All right, big picture weather shows a system sitting well out towards the west of us. This system is coming our way, and because of that, big changes are coming along with it. Lately, the whole United States has been stuck in what we call an omega blocking pattern. Low pressure to the east, high pressure central portions of the United States. Low pressure out west, it looks like the Greek letter omega. And generally because of this, you get very persistent weather patterns that aren't very apt to change. But this is going to change this weekend. Trough of low pressure comes barreling our way, and along with it, not only wind for tonight and tomorrow, but I think a chance for thunderstorms very late Sunday, but a better bet for Monday. Here's your forecast for tonight. 76 degrees with mostly clear skies on hand. Southwest winds of pesky at 9 to 18. Tomorrow, those southwest winds pick up 13 to 26. We'll pick up some sun, but it'll be windy. 95 is your high. Sunday, we cool down just a touch. The best bet for thunderstorms really will not be until Monday morning, but we could get something to pop late Sunday evening on and through Monday. These could be some pretty decent storms. We're going to watch it closely. This is a good bundle energy that's headed our way. And then for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, temperatures gradually warm up into the upper 90s to low 100s. That's a look at weather. I'll be back tomorrow morning, 6 o'clock, fresh and early. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're looking for something to do with the kids tomorrow, we'd like to extend a special invitation to you. That's right. Channel 13 Action News is a proud sponsor of Kids Mix at Sunset Park tomorrow. All children in attendance will receive a goodie bag, enjoy the carnival, and meet some of their favorite Nickelodeon characters, including the Rugrats. Admission is $5. Children under three get in free. Trisha and I will be there along with several other members of the Action News team, so uh, stop by the Channel 13 booth and say hello after you have met with the Rugrats. <laughs> That's right. Well, if you're going to be out there, be sure to bring your sunblock. Up next, Kathy Ray explains why you may be buying the best sunscreen ever made. Also, will this firefighting giant be in our skies this summer during wildfire season? We'll be right back. Breaking news, solving problems in Southern Nevada. You're watching Channel 13 Action News Live. Channel 13 Action Weather is brought to you by Consumer Credit Counseling, the only local agency approved to provide required pre-filing bankruptcy counseling. Call Consumer Credit Counseling at 364-0344. Now from Action News, Kathy Ray's Health Report is still a month away officially, but here in the desert, spring is already well over, and that means the return of those dreaded sunburns. But a new crop of products promise to give your skin better protection than it's had in years. Sure, everyone knows that lying in the sun is bad for you, but so many still do it. We need the a good color. tan <laughs> for graduation tomorrow. Most of the sun worshipers here do have some form of sunscreen on their skin or with them. No, I don't mind it, but it's kind of a hassle. But this year, it just might be easier. That both stay on the skin longer and more importantly, continue to work longer. The most promising new lotions contain an ingredient called Helioplex. Existing sunscreens effectively block the UVB rays, but their UVA protection breaks down in less than two hours. Helioplex blocks those UVA rays for twice as long as anything that has come before. Most of the ingredients that protect us from UVA break down really soon after you go out in the sun. Helioplex prevents that from happening. Dermatologists it's say it's the burning. most important um, advance in sunscreen in yeah. years. They are less enthusiastic about a new sun protection pill meant to be taken daily along with sunscreen lotions. Dermatologists worry that people will just take the pill. Take a pill and be protected from the damaging effects of UV rays on our skin all day long. Reality, we're not there yet. Still, we are a lot further ahead than a generation ago. Doctors say today's most advanced lotions really do offer even more protection, but you've got to use them. These girls did put on lotion, but two of the three are getting almost no protection. Kathy Ray, Channel 13, Action News. <laughs>
Time now to check some of the most interesting video off the satellites from around America tonight. First stop, Sacramento, which is hosting the world's largest firefighting aircraft. The massive 747 has been modified to carry 24,000 gallons of water, which is what you saw coming out of the back of the plane. It's able to generate a wave of water on the ground 500 feet wide and five miles long. The jet, nicknamed the Super Tanker, can also carry fire retardant. To Southern California now for the annual solar-powered boat races. 40 high school teams turning out for the annual event at Lake Skinner. The Water District provides each team with kits to build the boats with solar panels and batteries. The goal is to teach students about the power of the sun's rays. The winning team rides off into the sunset with the Solar Cup. And finally, from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, where the Space Shuttle Discovery has been moved out of the vehicle assembly building to make the trip out to the launch pad. This will only be NASA's second shuttle flight since the Columbia disaster three years ago. Discovery is scheduled to fly sometime in early uh, to mid-July. And if you're wondering, this four-mile piggyback ride out to Launch Complex 39 takes about seven hours hmm. on top of that giant crawler, about a half mile an hour. All righty. And that does it for us here on Action News Live at 11 o'clock tonight. Coming up next, Brian Salmon will be here with Action Sports Extra with NBA highlights and much more. Thank you for watching and have a great weekend. Tonight on Action Sports Extra, Mr. Stuck on 713 battles in the bay while the Mad Dog has a maddening experience in the Windy City. Plus, two NBA elimination games on tap. Was there any love lost? Come on, take a ride on the wild side with us. Action Sports Extra is next. Hello and welcome to a Friday edition of Action Sports Extra. I'm Brian Salmon. The Cleveland Cavaliers won three straight games to take a three games to two lead over Detroit. All of that without starter and scorer Larry Hughes, who's been gone mourning the loss of his younger brother. Well, Hughes was back for game six. He suited up, but he did not play just out there to support his team. LeBron James showing the vision that a lot of people made comparisons to Magic Johnson, the pass to Daniel Marshall for the dunk, then to Drew Gooden. Both are the beneficiaries. Cavs down one at the half. Fourth quarter winning time. Rasheed Wallace with the bucket off the glass. She leads the Pistons with 24 points. Then Chauncey Billups. Shot clock winding down. Mr. Big Shot hits the bucket. He had 15 points late in the fourth quarter. LeBron James fouled with little over a second remaining. Down three. James makes the first. Misses the second. The tip in. Ah! It nearly goes in. The Pistons survived barely, 84 to 82. The series is now tied at three games apiece. There's not one guy in our roster who's saying, because Jason's not going to be there, we can't kick their butt. There's not one guy in the whole organization who's not saying to themselves, it's a shame, but let's go send a message anyways. We've got bigger things to do. Big words for Mark Cuban. The Mavericks playing without Jason Terry tonight. Game six, the fans were juiced. Dirk Nowitzki doing his thing, the turnaround. Mr. Diggler had 26 points and 21 rebounds, but the Spurs had their own foreign answer. Manu Ginobili to the rack and the foul. He led all scores with 30 points. Into the half, Ginobili stripped by Marquise Daniel. The bucket at the buzzer, but it was after the clock wound down, so it didn't count. 14 seconds remaining in this one. Dirk Nowitzki with the Mavericks down three, the tying three-pointer, no good. The Spurs would win this one 91 to 86. They tie the series at three games apiece. They go back to San Antonio, and things are getting very interesting. Well, Green Bay Packer Amon Green shed the pads and grabbed a club to help raise money for a local charity. Along with Green, our own Doug Kazarian joined over 150 family members, including superstars from the sports and entertainment realm for the second annual Amon Green Golf Shootout. The event raised over $50,000 for Easter Seals of Southern Nevada, which provides services for families with disabilities and special needs. Green and a teammate even missed practice for this cause. Our tooths are kind of long, so we could kind of, you know, get away from that and, and give back, you know, to not our community, but to the Las Vegas community and um, to show that, you know, that we are, you know, giving a, help, a helpful hand to, to help kids and help families out here. 
Well, from the long tooth football players to the athletes who truly have long teeth, horses, one specifically Barbaro, who's preparing for tomorrow's Preakness. The Kentucky Derby winner is the even favorite to win the second leg of the Triple Crown. Of course, Barbaro is attempting to become the first Triple Crown winner since the firm did it in 1978. Both trainer and owner believe Barbro is the closest thing to a sure bet, and we will see. You know, I'm not done yet. You know, heading to the casino can wait just a little bit. Up after the break, it's all about the boys of summer. Barry Bonds with another shot at Babe Ruth. Highlights of Mr. Stuck on 713 around the corner. Plus, Las Vegas Greg Maddox is stuck on five wins. Could the Mad Dog pick up his sixth win of the season? Find out when Action Sports returns. Welcome back. 4A State baseball scores from Reno. Bishop Gorman takes out the heavily favored Silverado baseball team in today's semifinals. 9 to 8 in 8 innings. The Gales advance to the finals, handing Silverado their first loss in double elimination in the tournament. So Silverado played again. And in their next matchup, they eliminated Galena with a 62 win. They advance to the finals versus the Gales. That game is tomorrow at 10 a.m. Silverado needs two straight wins to become the 4A champ. Gorman only needs to win one of those games. Well, now to a former Las Vegas high school baseball player, excuse me, Greg Maddox, who was on the hill looking to get his sixth win of the season. Of course, he's lost two straight games. How would he do it against the White Sox today in Chicago? Greg Maddox and the Sox. Interleague baseball play top of the first, or excuse me, bottom of the first inning. Maddox gives up an RBI single, gives up another RBI single, then one more, and then Jim Tomey steps to the plate and hits a home run to left field. A solo job is 447th career home run, 17th of the season. Chicago beats Chicago. The White Sox win this one. Six to one. Maddox goes five and two-thirds innings. Gives up nine hits, six earned runs, a strikeout. He loses his third straight, dropping his record to five and three on the season. Houston Astros pitcher Russ Springer was suspended four games for throwing a throwing at Barry Bonds earlier this week. Springer was also fined an undisclosed amount. Astros manager Phil Garner, who was warned during this sequence, was also suspended one game. Well, this was last. That was Barry Bonds' last game tonight. How did he do? In the Bay Area, still stuck on 713. Bonds began his night with a laser to left field. That was caught. He would finish the game with an ugly looking strikeout here. Wow, the A's win this one one to nothing. The Giants manage only two hits. Bonds didn't have either of them. He goes over three with a K and a walk. More baseball action. The Dodgers hosting the Angels in another interleague play. Aaron Seeley on the hill with the strikeout. Sealy had three on the night, and he gets plenty of offense. How about 16 runs and 25 hits? 16 runs and 25 hits. The Dodgers open up a can. Better yet, a case on the Angels, and I guess we know who the real team in L.A. is at this moment in time. The 51s in Albuquerque taking on the Albuquerque Isotopes. That's a great name. 51s get hammered 7 to nothing. They managed six hits, but they couldn't score. The Isotopes have two straight wins over Las Vegas. And lastly, really quickly, we're getting into some hockey action. You know, there's some playoffs going on. People might not know anything about it. Let's take a look at this hockey action if we can. Here we go. The Edmonton Oilers and the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim in this one. Second period, the Oilers on the power play off a deflected shot. Look at Aless Hemsky. Hits the puck out of the air, goes in 3-1. to one. Anaheim loses. That's all we have for tonight. Have a good evening.